Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, and this is tips number 667, part 2 of a two-part series, all about the Mac Bulldog. I hope you watched part 1, where I made the base to hold the Mac Truck Bulldog, and this was given to me again by one Mr. Chase Fisher down in Louisiana, and I thank him so much for that. So. Let's get back into this project. So in part one, which was a very long video, I made the wooden foundry pattern for the base and I t intend to cast it out of aluminum. And some will say, well why didn't you just turn this out of a solid piece of wood rather than laminate it? And well, I guess I like to do it the hard way. And I'm not really a wood turner. Others would say, why didn't you just turn it out of aluminum, solid block of aluminum? But I like to do the casting work, so that's why I did this, and it's all shellacked and ready to cast. Remember, there's a curvature on this, and that was really the hard part in making this. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, in just a matter of seconds here, you will see an aluminum casting setting right here instead of the wood one. And if you want to see me cast this and all the foundry work, that will be toward the end of this video entitled Extra Credit because some people are just kind of tired of the foundry work because a lot of it is similar to what I have been doing. So I'll be back in two seconds with the casting. Well, it's two seconds later and as promised, there's my casting and it's still warm. Turned out pretty good. However, on this side I had a bit of fall in, that is sand got washed in probably from this area here at the bottom of the sprue. And of course, you know, I'm just shortcutting here because my flask isn't big enough, but if I had a runner and a trap it would have caught that. So rather than scrap the casting, I'll just clean that up and just a little bit of Bondo in there and it's going to be painted anyway but I'm not real proud of that little area there. Yeah, let me get this cut off. When I made the pattern, I had two little dimples, one there and one right there, center punch marks, with a line through them, and that's my center line, my axis. Like this is a big deal, but anyway, there they are in the casting, and I'll scribe a line between the two. That will help me center this base from left to right, so it's truly on the axis. I, that's maybe a little bit of overkill, but that's how I like to do things. Naturally, these are out to the edge where none of the <laughs> die casting is going to cover them. But it'll be alright. And that cleaned up pretty good. And this will be the back of the thing when it goes on display in my den. What is a den anyway? My dad didn't have one. Can you see my center line both on the casting and on the base? Right there and there. Same thing on the back side. And I do have a transfer screw in there right now. So let's give it a light tap and see what we get. That's the center punch mark that I just made, so I got to go ahead and drill that out six millimeter. But you know what? I think quarter inch is good enough, don't you? It's starting to take shape. Now, this, the actual bulldog will be fastened with two metric bolts that come in kind of at an angle, oblique angle, or is oblique an angle already. So, what I'm going to have to do now is get those marked and then go over to the milling machine and just mill some relief for those heads that will be something, you know, at an angle like that. I think I'll run a transfer punch in there that might give me an idea about where to do it. Note the curvature is quite good.
As you know, all metals shrink as they solidify. And aluminum is no different, and it shrinks at a rate of about 330 seconds of a foot. I don't know what the percentage is, but my point here, and this is splitting hairs and who really cares, but since the casting will now be smaller than the pattern, and I'll show you how much, and I'm going to measure across here so I'm not measuring where the, the gate came in. So that is my measurement. on the wood pattern and on the casting now there's considerable difference. Can you see that? So this is smaller by that rate that I just told you and since it is smaller how much did that change the radius? Well I probably can't measure it by any of the tools I have, but it would be different, but I would say it is negligible and certainly have a good fit the way it is. That would have gone on the curved hood of a Mack truck, of course. That was a waste of time. There are the two marks that I just made with the transfer punch right there and right there. And all I need is a little pocket. For the heads. Some relief. And they're going to be going in there like, yeah, like that. So I'll go over to the milling machine and just spot face them with a half inch or a 9 16 or maybe even a 5 8 end mill. I took my little dividers and made a couple of concentric circles there that will help me determine exactly where that end mill will go when I get over to the mill. And I know I can hear it now. I can hear it now. Why didn't you do that ahead of time and put the pockets in the pattern and cast those in? And there it is, the proud Mack Truck Bulldog. Not top heavy at all. I didn't weigh the base, I will later on, but it must be about a three pound base. Now I will take the time off camera to fill all of the little pits prior to painting. I wonder what color. I got plenty of black paint around here. Did you ever see a black Mack Truck? I don't know what colors they come in. Well, it's the next day and I lost some of the footage where I filled in with body putty and then I primed it with red Rust-Oleum primer and then gave it two coats and I don't know how well that shows up but it's really quite a pretty color of this Durusto Light Bronze. It has a little bit of metallic in it so it's looking pretty good so I'll go ahead and get the Mac Bulldog mounted. I wanted to put some protective felt pads or bumpers underneath this and every one of these and every one of these is dried out where the adhesive just peels off. In other words they're ruined. Luckily I have a back stock from Bumper Specialties and these are still fresh and I have those in all different sizes. Anyway there's the bumpers so that pretty much completes the job. Not pretty much, it does. Well that completes the project and it reminds me of why 3D printing is so valuable because this took 
including the prototype, I'd say uh, 10 hours to make. And there's a lot of wasted time waiting for glue to dry and paint to dry and varnish and all of that. But it's so much smoother than the 3D printing. There's none of that layering. I mentioned that before. And I'm happy with it. And that will go in my den. You know, Ozzie Nelson and Ward Cleaver and uh, Robert Young all had dens. Of course, they didn't work. They just hung around the house bothering their wife. <laughs> all right. Thank you for watching. That completes this video, but wait, there's more. There's extra credit if you're interested. If not, I'm signing out for now. Thanks for watching. This is Mr. Pete. See you next time. Welcome back, and thanks for staying around for extra credit. I'm out in the garage. It's near the end of March, and it's finally the year 2021. It's finally warmed up enough. It's about 60 or 65 degrees today where I can make my first castings of the year. So let's get started on this base for the Mack Truck Bulldog. Let's do some molding. All right, I'm going to place the pattern in the drag portion of the flask, and I'm going to move it over a little bit, right about there. See the X? That's about where I would like to have my sprue. And I'm just going to use one big old sprue riser, you know, right about, right about there, I guess. As always, some parting compound, parting dust. Keep the sand from sticking to the pattern.
Well, it's been 45 minutes. Let's have a look. A little bit of sand fell in there, have a few imperfections, but I'm not doing it over. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the extra credit. All the sand will have to be remalled. So long for now. Thank you for sticking around for the extra credit. And I'll see you in my next video. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.